came from the four corners of the earth, the mightiest gladiators from Great Britain, Australia, the USA, Germany, South Africa, and Russia. Together, they united to accept the challenge of the international champion contenders in a battle that will decide who is the best in the world. countries represented tonight come from as far afield as Australia, Russia, South Africa, and the USA. So, Ulrike, this is truly a global affair. Well, that's right, Mike. And with the action we've seen over the past few weeks, things are really hotting up backstage. And who can blame our contenders when our eventual champions will win a round-the-world trip for two? about our runners-up. They'll each walk away with £2,000. That being said, I think it's time to meet tonight's contenders. First, for the women, they are from Australia, Lorene Bavart, and from Russia, Ludmila Matchenko. Lorene, welcome. How are you feeling? Really excited and I can't wait. Oh, you look very relaxed and sounding very confident. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from and what you do. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. I'm a physical education teacher and the training I do is karate. Oh, I see. So, what does it feel like to be in England and taking part in international gladiators? Well, the weather at the moment makes me feel like at home because Melbourne's got the same weather. <laughs> but taking part, representing your country, you can't ask for anything more. It's a big buzz. And you've had a look at the competition and you've had a look at the international gladiators. How do you think you're going to fare? They're awesome, those gladiators, so hopefully I'm going to be awesome as well. We certainly hope so. Lorene Bavard. Ludmilla, welcome to Birmingham, England. What do you do for a living and where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Romish. I'm 21. I've been doing athletics for 12 years. What is your favourite event and why? I like all the events and I think I'll do well in every one of them. And how do you think you're going to do against the gladiators this evening? Well, let the spectators be the judge of that. Best of luck. Good to have you here. Ludmila Matchenko. So we've met our female contenders. Let's meet the gladiators they'll be facing tonight. From the United States of America, ice and jazz. From South Africa, Delilah and Sahara. And from the United Kingdom, Lightning and Bow. Well, you've met our women. Time now to meet our macho men. Let's introduce you tonight to first our male contenders. They are from the USA, Patches Mazia. And from South Africa, Prince Sonny. She's Marzia, a fabulous surname. Where on earth is that from, Pat? Uh, it comes from my father from Hungary. Yeah, he, uh, he gave it to me. <laughs> well, I should hope he did. <laughs> Tell us what you do and where you're from. Uh, what I do is I, I coach snowboarding in the wintertime. I also compete, and the rest of the time I get ready for it. Have you been to England before? No, this is my first time. It's what do you think about it? Great country, lots of great people. And we've got some great audiences here as well. Now tell us, you've had a look at the international competitors and the gladiators. How do you think you're going to do? Uh, it's a great, great group of co uh, competitors. It's going to be tough to get through. And of course, the gladiators are also equally as great. <laughs> but you're looking forward to it? Oh, yes, very much so. Well, the very best of luck. Pat Gismazia. Yeah. 
Prince, you certainly have the look of a champion. Tell us a little bit about yourself, starting with that great name of yours, Prince Sonny. Um, my name is Prince Sonny. I'm 23 years old. Uh, I play American football back home in South Africa, and I'm a model by profession. And I'm very glad uh, here today to represent my country, South Africa. I know we've been in a lot of difficulties. Uh, I'm very glad to represent my country here today, and I'm ready to die for it. Prince, those are very strong words and very noble words. One of the things you told me backstage is you've seen this show on television before, but then you came to Birmingham, had a chance to practice on some of the apparatus, and it's a totally different story, isn't it? Yeah, actually, back home, I used to watch Gladiators, uh, but I used to think it's something very easy. But when I actually got here, I saw that it's something very, very different. It's really, really different. When you get out there, it's different. We're looking for you to do well here, and I'm sure the crowd here in Birmingham will root you on. Good luck. Prince Sonny from South Africa. So that's the male contenders. Let's meet the male gladiators. From Australia, Hammer and Tower. From Germany, Giant and Flash. From Russia, Dynamite and Titan. From the United Kingdom, Trojan. Well, Ricky, have we left anything out? I think we've covered all the bases. One thing left to be said. Let the games begin. <laughs> Using the blue scoring balls from Australia, Loreen Bavart. And trying to score with the red scoring markers, Russia's Ludmila Matchenko. For the Gladiators, Vogue, Ice, and Delilah. The UK cover girl Vogue, the Ice Maiden from the United States, and the South African sensation Delilah. Over to Larry Thompson. Australia and Russia, are you ready? Gladiators, are you ready? Yes, the quiet ones are always the worst. Get this international action on. Luder against Vogue. Beats Delilah. Two points. Ice coldly cuts down Loreen. Luder again. Ice is there. And Delilah. All can't stretch. Loreen dragging Vogue in awake. Two points. Sorts of posse out. Luder. Vogue's there. Delilah covering. Loreen tackled by Ice. Can't hold her. Slams home the points. Luder surrenders. Loreen. Good marking from Vogue. Luder. Ice chills her out. Marine sees the gap, sent to basket, three points. The Australian karate champion getting into this game. Luda beats Delilah, baskets the ball. Marine, superb tackle from Vogue. Luda. Oh, Ice gives it the cold shoulder. Marine, Vogue with the interception. Daniel is tackling well, but these girls are fast. Luda. Oh, good save by Ice. Marine, Vogue pushing her wide. Ice there to cover. Luda, one last chance. Yes! Beats two gladiators just on the final whistle. The gladiators did a great job, particularly the UK's Vogue against two superb contenders. In the replay, even when Vogue can't hold the Australian, she grabs the next best thing. Now, that would have been a spectacular takedown. After that fast and furious opener, Lorene from Australia has seven. Luda from Russia, six. The men have that lean and hungry look using the blue scoring markers from South Africa. Prince Sonny and operating with the red scoring balls from the USA, Patch Ismazia. For the Gladiators, our terrible trio of Giant, Titan, and Hammer. The German Giant, Titan from Russia, and the Wizard of Oz, Hammer. John Anderson. South Africa and USA ready! Gladiators ready! Well, between them, the gladiators packing over 50 stones of solid muscle, but the prince looks as if he means business. Here's why. I'm looking forward for the Powerball because uh, I've been playing American football and I'm very used to uh, contact games, so that's why I think I'll do very well in there. Three, two, one! Here's the South African Prince. Oh, 
Oh, clutch the points. Pat smashed into the ground by Hammer. Prince reloads against the Titan. Oh, two more. Pat tackled by Giant. Oh, and the Steam Hammer there. Prince again. Titan and Hammer are there. Doesn't fancy the odds. Hammer with the afters. And Pat, amazing speed from the American. Two points. Prince. Oh, two more there from under Titan's nose. And Pat wisely bails out. More afters from Giant and Hammer. Great run. Oh, the ref's blown up. Stop play. Just as Prince was poised for a centre basket. Pat the man, but he did not have the ball. Don't do it again. What a lecture there from UK ref John Anderson. Not a man to be messed with. But Prince's supporters not happy with his timing. But he was right to stop it. Giant and Hammer clearly throwing their weight around after Pat had grounded the ball. So we start again with 31 seconds remaining. the Prince leaves Titan standing like a statue two points Pat nailed by Hammer Prince looking for the gap Titan takes him this time Pat the American survival of the fittest champion he'll be pleased to survive this doesn't fancy his chances here here's Prince oh taken down by Titan and Hammer Pat against Giants Hammer so keen he tackles Giants oh the referee is blown up again he's gonna wear that whistle out tonight well, obviously requiring Hammer to replace his safety helmet. I think we've got one in your size, sir. 12 and 7 8. And timekeeper Andy Norgate obliges. Eight seconds remaining. Three, two, one. Pat against Giants. Oh, fells him and scores two. Prince comes to load up, but he's going to be out of time. Excellent performances all round. Plenty of action. That's the way we like it. Here's Mike. Football in South Africa, did that help? Yeah, definitely. It helped me. Yeah. But the guy that I was against, he's a tough guy to two. But I don't know. I thank God for that. Well, you win Powerball 8 4, nicely done. Prince Sonny from South Africa. <laughs> Pat, I get the distinct impression that you're glad this thing is over. Yeah, this is one of my least favorite games, but it gives me the most adrenaline, and I am glad it's over. Is your body intact? Yeah, thank God. Barely, though. Okay, you'll live to compete again. Pat Chismazia from the USA. Right, let's join Kimberly with the Gladiators. There's certainly a lot of action in that game. Titan, did you have fun? This game is fantastic. I'm, the, <laughs> I'm in the top of the world. You're on top of the world. Well, uh, how do you feel about the game? This was your first time playing it, Giant. It's the first time playing, and it's a great game. It's a rough, tough game, and there's many tactics. That's very important. It's a good game. So you're on a learning curve. Hammer, you've been doing this for a long time. You've got a rugby background. Well, Kimberly, the guys, a couple of times I think the game was stopped because a couple of the contenders threw the ball on the ground. And when I tackle, I tackle low and I have my eyes to the ground. And when they drop it, I can't see it. So I follow through on the tackle. There's no way I'm not going to do that. But they came at us and we certainly give it back. Well, I don't think the crowd are too happy with you at this point. I think they wanted you off. Well, the whole idea of the game is for them to take us on. And a couple of times they drop the ball, you know, and it doesn't make for a good game. Well played anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, please have a round of applause for our gladiators. Right, with one event under their belts, Pat from the USA has scored four. The South African Prince has eight. Next. First up on the pendulum, it's Lorene from Australia. And she's going to be facing Jazz from the United States. And looking at the stats and all that jazz, the American Gladiator star stands 5'10 and weight in at 12 and a half stones. Her contender, Louis Bavart from Australia, same height, but well over a stone lighter. Set the pendulum! So it's swing time for Jazz and for Loreen Bavart, 30-year-old PE instructor from Melbourne. She knows she's got to evade Jazz for 40 seconds to score five points and for the full minute to score ten. She's expecting to face the music any second now, then she'll make her move. But Jazz being very sneaky, taking her time, building the tension up as she skirts the North Pole. And Jazz goes for it. Loreen has seen her. 
Marina's come halfway round the world to be here. Now she's got to do it again on a minor scale to avoid Jazz. Lorene, three times world karate champion, dubbed the best fighter, man or woman, in Australia. She's not going to surrender on this pendulum. She's good for five at least. Jazz is close, but not close enough to flag her down. This wild ride, one of the most difficult for the gladiators. But a real test of the contender's strength and stamina. Looks like Lorene has passed that test. She's going to pick up ten points. Oh, yes, the Aussies have proclaimed their own monarch. And Jazz disappointed. But Lorene is a remarkable Australian athlete. Here she is for a chat. Well, Lorene, <laughs> your tactic was, on, was obviously to stay stationary to start with until you saw her and then the chase was on. Yeah, I just had, had to find out where she was. So I heard that Jazz is pretty quick. Just avoid her. That's what happened. She couldn't catch me, thank God. Were you aware of the audience behind you? Of course, as she's getting nearer, they're cheering you on. Oh, yeah, of course. Thanks a lot, audience. You helped me a lot. And of course, you picked up 10 points. Well done. All right. <laughs> that was very exciting once you found her. You got very close on a few occasions. A couple of times I could see her, but she's an excellent contender. She's very fast, and in a size wise, you're a very good match. <sighs> All I can think of is, guys, she's got legs like mine. She's flying across here. Let's hear it for our gladiator, Jazz, and for Laureen. She's going to be facing Angel from Germany. Over to Larry Thompson. Set the pendulum. The German gladiator Angel sets out on her interceptor course looking for her contender, Ludmila Machenko from the Russian city of Voronezh. That's 500 kilometers south of Moscow, if I remember. 21 years of age and has been involved in sports since uh, the age of eight. Here comes the Angel. Where else but from above? Luda trying to take evasive action. Angel so close to her flag. Swinging round. Yes. She's got it. Angel literally flew round that globe to get the job done. No points for Luda. In the replay, Angel was faster over the net, specially knitted for the event by John Anderson's wife, and she snatched the prize. And all that excitement boils down to the fact that after two events, Lorene from Australia swings up to 17, while Luda languishes on six. Someone's been here, done that, bought the T-shirt, and is having a great time. So we now move into the men's event with Pat from the United States. He's going to be facing Tower from Australia. Now looking at the design and dimensions of the Tower block, he's a high and mighty boy, 6'5 and weighing over 17 stones. Compare that to the Pac Man from America, who's six inches shorter and five stone lighter. One event where the lighter man stands a much better chance. Now, years ago in this country, you were sent to the tower for execution. On Gladiators, the tower comes to you. Pat Chitmarzia of the USA is at home in the frozen north, a snowboard instructor by profession and former American Gladiators men's champion. 26 years old, comes from a small town called Ketchum in the state of Idaho. Well, he's looking good to pull his five comfortably, but he'll be wanting to clock up the maximum, staying as high as possible, where the force of the pendulum is at its lowest. Ever vigilant knows one mistake on that net or one moment's lack of concentration will cost him dear. And the Aussie Tower struggling to get on terms. 240 pounds. Very good company over lunch, just as long as you don't have to pick up the bill afterwards. The patch riding it out. He may as well enjoy it. He knows the up and coming events won't be so comfortable. But well done to Pat. Ten points safely in the bag. And this Birmingham crowd have really taken to all our overseas guests this season. As Tower dismounts, let's look at a replay. Now, Tower stays low, but the force of the swing, plus his 17 stones, makes the going very tough for him. His 
ploy of trying to sneak up on him doesn't work. Next up, it's Prince of South Africa. And he's going to be facing Flash of Germany. Set the pendulum. Africa's Prince Sonny hoping to avoid a dark cloud looming over him in the shape of the German gladiator Flash. But my goodness, the Flash is fast. Look at that for speed. Prince desperate to escape. Yes, the Flash grabs the rag and wipes the floor with him. Brilliant pendulum performance from the Flash man. And as the Prince drops out of the sky, you'll see why he's called Flash. Grabs the Prince's royal standard in just over 10 seconds. This explosive gladiator certainly no Flash in the pan. Yeah, actually, I'm very scared of height, and uh, I haven't been in anything like this before. So were you almost quite glad he caught you? Yeah. <laughs> and Flash, you were incredibly fast. Well done. I heard the whistle. I was concentrated on. I took my chance on the right side, put him up, saw him, and then I uh, never let him go. You certainly didn't. Let's hear it for Flash and for Prince. Never mind. After that blistering action, the American takes the lead. Pat swings to 14. The South African Prince stays on eight. trying to muster up points ahead of the eliminator join us after the break for more action here on international gladiators welcome back to the national indoor arena and more international gladiators part two we are set now for event number three First female contender is ready to climb the pole. She is Lorene Bavard from Australia. She has to go against from South Africa, Sahara. She's hot, say the fans, and you can judge for yourself. The South African Sahara stands a splendid 6-2 and weighs exactly 11 stones. Ten points for Lorene if she hits the top first. Lorene is climbing well. And Sahara looks slow, tentative. Obviously not as confident about this event as she is the others. And Sahara looking desolate up there, not often associated with the poles. Oh, she's going down to the barren wasteland of the crash mat. Good victory for Lorene. Sahara failing to whip up a sandstorm and the Australian contingent pleased with that. She never looked like coming second and pushed that button which made the Sahara desert the pole. Marine, a big smile and why not? Ten points for getting to the top of the pole axe first. You are a three-time national champion, world champion, karate fighter. This is a little bit different proposition. How were you able to do so well? Just the knee strikes, think high knee lifts, grab that pole and pull me up. I didn't want to fall down. It's a long way up there. You, you don't happen to have a fear of heights, do you? Not at all. Not at all? No fears. You look very confident. Well done. Nicely done. Thank you. So, Hara, what's the diff most difficult thing for you? Uh, I think being up there the first time, probably. There's actually a learning curve involved here. People, no matter how good an athlete you are, you just don't do this overnight, right? I don't think so. <laughs> Definitely you, not. You'll get better as you go along. Don't worry about that. I'm looking forward to try again. Okay, we'll let you try again. Sahara and Loreen Bavart from Australia. <laughs> Next up for the female contenders from Russia, Ludmila Matchenko. <laughs> for the gladiators, the UK's Lightning. <laughs> Lightning, a striking star of four seasons of gladiators in the UK, stands 5'6", weighs in at just over nine stones. Luda Machenko from Russia, two inches taller, but a couple of stones heavier. Three, two, one. And Lightning with a good start. Luda needs the points to get back into this competition. She's trailing Lorene. Lightning's climbing well. Very experienced on the pole. It's close. Terrific climb from Luda, considering the weight difference. Lightning's there. Luda, Russian through and through, and now Russian to the crash mat. Ready, go. Go. 
Even if you win, you've got to come down the hard way. So, so very, very close. You almost won. What did you think of your performance? You've seen what happened. I could only say bad start, but good finish. That's all. Better luck next time. Very well done, though. I know this is one of your better events, Lightning, but do you know how close she came to beating you? I know, I know. This is the first time I've done it in a show, so in the same boat, and I know exactly how she feels. But it was so close, you know, I could even see her as I was going around, and I thought, oh my God, I better pick up speed. She did very well. The Lightning, you always give 100% in every event. Nicely done. Thank you. Lightning! The crowd cheer Lightning's performance, but Luna won't thank her for it. After three events, she now trails Lorene 27 to 6. The men are set for Polax. First up for the men contenders from the USA, Pat Chismazia. <laughs> Representing the gladiators from Germany, Giant. There's the Giants. The German gladiator, very impressive stats. Five inches taller than Pat and two and a half stones heavier. B, two, one. Well, Giant more used to climbing a beanstalk than a pole, and Pat from America, this is going to be fast. Giant, despite his bulk, scaling the stairs superbly. It's going to be Pat's. Yes, a fairy tale finish fells the Giant. The American supporters loved that, and Pat hit the emergency button that rang the alarm bells in the giant's head, and then so did that crash mat. It's a workout. You wouldn't think so. A, an event that lasts 10 seconds or less, but it is tough. It's really tough. And he's a quick guy. He is so quick, but we only had one time going up this, so next time, I get him. Sounds like you want a rematch, huh? Sure. <laughs> Maybe we can arrange it. Patch his mozzie it. Your time, 8.8 .8 seconds, is it? and as I understand it, that may be the fastest time ever for a contender in pole axe. As you well know, as the 1995 American Gladiator Champion, we have some wild events back in the States, but nothing quite like this. No, definitely not. This is, uh, this is awesome. This is incredible, and I think Giant gave me a little bit too much credit back there. He's just as quick as me. I just got a little more lucky than him. What is, the, what is the best part of this thing, going up or coming down, the free fall? <laughs> going up. <laughs> You'll, we'll get you a free fall in next time. Patches, Mazzi, a giant, great match in Polax. <laughs> next up for the contenders from South Africa, Prince Sonny. <laughs> for the gladiators, you love them, Trojan. Trojan, like he's leading on the lamppost at the corner of the street there. One of the most powerful UK gladiators stands 6'2 and 16 stones. Compare those to the weights and measures of the South African prince. He's the same height as Trojan, but well over a stone lighter. B, two, one. Well, the prince has already admitted he's not fond of heights, but British fans know the Trojan can be beaten on the pole. Trojan climbing gingerly, and the prince hanging on for dear life. But it's going to be close. Oh, the Prince steals it! The Trojan horse, a faller at the last hurdle. But you've got to get up to get down. Trojan, race-wise, that was about as good as it gets. I and mean, it appears that the, the biggest difference are in the final seconds, milliseconds, trying to search out that sensor. It looked like you had problems finding it. Yeah, very much so. I mean, I slipped once at one point, was Chris grabbing on my one hand. The last couple of seconds, last couple of feet, they're the crucial ones. And uh, today this guy beat me full due to this guy. Well, man, yeah. In your training for gladiators, and you had no idea what any of these events were all about, did you do anything that came close to approximating what you needed to do well in uh, Polax? Um, actually, no. <laughs> um, this is actually my second time on a Polax, and uh, I'm actually scared of heights. And uh, come on, really? Tell. Yeah, I can't just, I can't just tell how I got up there. I don't know. Well, you look terrific. Take a deep breath. Turn around, smile to the crowd, because they love you. You got 10 points. Prince Sonny from South Africa and Trojan. Prince with a sunny smile, and little wonder he needed those points to get back into contention. 24-18 after three. Next. First up on suspension bridge from Australia is Lorraine. And 
she'll be facing from the USA, our Gladiator Jazz. Noreen looking confident. Here's why. I train at Samurai Karate in Australia. It's a form of Shukokai. It's a traditional martial art. I've been training for eight years. I'm number one in Australia and number one in the world. Australia ready! Jazz will have to dance away to victory on this bridge. Oh, but she's getting stuck into the karate jab, swinging away. Oh, she's got her with a right hook. This is her event, the Aussie sent down under. I suppose Lorena, a better fighter with her bare hands. Kimberly's there. Lorene, you must be frustrated. I can see you're pretty angry. I hate it. I hate it. This girl hates losing, don't you? Well, she was good. All the credit to her, she's done well. She certainly was. Now, this is your first time up on Suspension Bridge. Was it scary? Oh, not at all. It was a little bit different, but it wasn't scary. Jazz, you're incredible up there. You really are. Well, you know, I heard the Americans behind me just screaming and hollering. I couldn't let them down. This is the International Games, and we've got a good, set of great representation. You certainly have, Lorraine, unfortunately. No points, but a very good effort. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Lorraine from Australia and Jazz from the USA. Australian contender Andrew Halliday there. We'll see him in the semis. Our next female contender up on suspension bridge from Russia is Luda. And she'll be facing from South Africa, Sahara. And it's over to our international referee, Larry Thompson. Russia! Sahara comes storming across to kick sand in Luda's face. There's 10 points waiting on the Gladiators platform, and Luda needs to reach them. And big shots are going in from both girls. Luda taking it to Sahara. And Sahara retreats to defend her territory. She's in trouble. It's getting too hot for Sahara. Oh, she's got her. Is she going? Yes. Suspense on the suspension bridge. She went. Luda crosses for the maximum points. The Russian fans on their feet. Looking at that finish again, Sahara goes for a big one. Loses her balance. Luda's there. Gives her a nudge. A bosh on the bunch. And she was gone. Fantastic effort, Luda. Ten points to you. Yeah, I'm very happy that I've beaten the gladiator. That's great. So you had a fantastic time. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Luda from Russia and Sahara from South Africa. Well, that win certainly helps the cause. After four events, Australia's Lou Reen stays on 27, while Luda from Russia hits 16. Our first male contender on suspension bridge from the USA is Pat. And he'll be facing from Russia, Dynamite. The explosive Russian stands the same height as the American contender, but weighs well over five stones more. Dina Miti. USA, ready! Ready, Echo, ready! Three, two, one! And Pats comes out tentatively. What's Dynamite gonna do? Ouch, that! Dynamite's come to demolish, unleashing the bombs. Pat's gonna go off. Oh, oh. Gets a shove out the door and out of the points. The crowd are singing. And Dynamite whipping them up. In fact, he whips the crowd up almost as well as he whops the contenders down. He weighs it up, wades in, and wipes him out. No points. Next up on suspension bridge from South Africa is Prince. And he'll be facing the might of the UK gladiator, Warrior. Yes, as if we need telling. The man mountain from the UK stands three inches taller than Prince and a monstrous five stones heavier.
Well, this could be a case of the contender formerly known as Prince. He knows what he's got to do to get past Warrior. The Warrior goes straight to work. Oh, he's overcooked it. The Prince is the king of the bridge. What a right royal turnaround. Incredible win for Prince Sonny from South Africa. Yeah, it got me, uh... Let me say something. I used to live and work in South Africa for three years, OK? And I tell you what, they've got some fantastic athletes out there, and with this new era that we've got now over in South Africa, you're going to see some of the world's best athletes, and we've got a great guy here today. So, uh, all applause to him. Well done, mate. You came down at me, hit me hard, and there you go. So good. Well done. Prince, you certainly are a prince. That was amazing. Yeah, actually... I thought he was going to knock me up because uh, he came with a full force. But I don't know how I did it. I just, I just went for it. Yeah, well, exactly. whatever you did, you did right. Yeah, he's actually he's a very tough gladiator. I promise you, the first knock he gave me, I could feel it. But I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think he felt the fall. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Warrior from the UK and Prince from South Africa. Ten points. But the Warrior will be back to fight another day. After four events, Pat remains on 24, while the Prince blasts his way to 28. Next. And getting ready to swing, it's Ludmilla from Russia. And Lorene from Australia. And they'll be facing Lightning from the UK. And Ice from the United States. Australia and Russia, are you ready? Yeah. Gladiators, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. All together, swing out sisters, Luna leaps, marked out by lightning. Ice is too quick, and Lorene is too short. Superb recovery by Lightning, timing her swing again. Keeps Luda at bay, she only comes away with a couple of yellows. And Lorene plucks a blue and a yellow. It's one for a yellow, two for a blue, three for a red. Lorene again. Luda there and picks a pair of lemons. Lorene snatches a brace of blues and the ice not so hot on swing shot. Luda baskets her booty, she's on for a free swing. Oh, up she goes, just falls short. Should have done better. Lorene banks the balls, never happier than when she's got the blues. Swings again. Oh, almost hits a jackpot red, but the ice woman cut it. Luda with another free swing, but nothing to show for it. And time running down in this high scorer. Lorene again, goes for a big one. Ice last for the ball again. And Luda marked out by lightning. And we've run out of time here. And both girls stick to the center. <laughs> Very funny stuff from Lorene and Ice. Good swing shot from both contenders. As they untangle, let's check out the replay. And most of Lorene's points came when she consistently beat Ice to the cylinder. That Sheila's got more bounce to the ounce than a kangaroo. Here are your totals in swing shot. Ludmila Metchenko of Russia, four. Lorene Vivart of Australia, seven. That means Lorene from Australia has scored a total of 34, while Luda of Russia has 20. So we now move into the men's event with Pat from the United States. And Prince from South Africa. And they're going to be facing Trojan from the UK. And Tower from Australia. Over to John Anderson. South Africa. And USA ready! Ready it all! Ready! Three, two, one! Oh, Pat skips onto the basket for more lift. Up they go. Oh, there's the skin and hair flying about everywhere, but they all come away empty-handed. Pat recoils, trying to mount the platform. Trojan and Tower have a fast recovery, biding their time, letting both contenders set themselves up for the next swing. Prince, as we know, not comfortable with heights. Here comes Pat. Trojan with the big block. Limits Pat to a yellow. Good recovery. Prince has come away with a couple of blues, looking better. Pat with a free swing there. As high as the Reds can only manage the blue. 
Oh, Tala, too late for Brins. He's picked Reds, and Tala tries to mug him on the way down. Oh, and John Anderson will not tolerate that kind of behavior. Pat banks a couple of blues. The American's hungry. He's back for more. Picks a yellow. Pots his prize. Finally, the Prince gets to put his treasure in the chest to boost his score to 10. Pat with another free swing, scrumps a lemon. Prince again, and he gets a fistful. There's the whistle. What an action-packed swing shot that turned out to be. Trojan with a smile. Pat knows he should have done better, though. Tower rebuked severely by the ref for this incident with Prince. The South African does superbly to grab two reds, but Tower deliberately impedes his return. In swing shot, Patches Mozzie of the USA six, Prince Sonny of South Africa twelve. Add those to the final scores going into the eliminator. Pat from the US of A has a total of thirty. Prince from South Africa a total of forty. Now all that remains is the eliminator itself. Join us for more fantastic action here on International Gladiators. International Eliminator time. Now, in the women's competition, we have Russia against Australia. Ludmilla is on 20 points, Lurine's on 34 points. That's a 14 point difference, giving Lurine a seven second head start. Over to John Anderson. Australia, you will go on my first whistle. Russia, you will go on my second whistle. Three. Two, one! 30-year-old Lorene from Melbourne, Australia begins her run, a PE teacher and three times world karate champion. Here comes Ludmila Machenko. She's 21, an athlete from the city of Voronezh in Russia. Lorene up the rope and onto the overhead ladder. Her fellow Australian screaming for her. Luna on the rope and struggling. This delay will cost her. Lorene on the rollers. Oh, Lily takes a flyer! Poses herself on the nets, climbing carefully, can't afford another mistake. Luda looking unhappy on the hand ladder, designed to sap the strength in the arms. Lorene holds herself to the top of the nets and jogs to the furthest zip. Luda on the rollers, needs to dig deep, keep her head and hope Lorene makes an error on the balance beam or the travelator. Lorene sweeps down the line, knows the graveyard is next. Luda on the nets and the flags are out for her. Marine on the beam, good control technique. To be a world karate champion, you've got to be some kind of superwoman. Steals herself for the punishing travelator ahead. She pumps it up. She's there. And into the semi finals, Lorene Bebar from Australia. Aussie contender Andrew Holiday delighted. Munda, she might as well enjoy the atmosphere here at the indoor arena. She's got 7,000 people screaming for her. She's done well come second to an exceptional contender. Well, those flags have sold well tonight. Now, digs deep up that travelator. Wobbles a bit, but she's there. Pauses to acknowledge the crowd. Ludmila Bachenko from Russia. Swings through the burst to defeat the Eliminator. Huge congratulations. It looked to me as if you walked the Eliminator. I don't think so. I felt it pretty hard. Well, it looked very easy, except for one small problem there, just before the net. Yeah, I lost my balance there, but never mind, I got onto the mat, so I was lucky. You did very well. Will you come back and do it all over again? You bet I will. Here's your medal. Let's hear it for Lorene of Australia. Well done. But, Mila, it certainly wasn't a lack of effort. As you look back at the competition, where did things go wrong for you? Simply, she's been more lucky than me today. A memorable performance, nicely done, okay? Come back and see us. Look at it, Metchenko of Russia. In the men's eliminator, it'll be Patches Mazi of the USA versus Prince Sonny of South Africa. We'll have that race after this timeout. When I think of America, I think of big. Big wide open spaces, big buildings, big cars, the land of golden opportunity, where nothing's impossible. Hawk for president, that's what I say. If Ronald Reagan can do it, anybody can. Mind you, Hawk, you're going to have to get a proper haircut. 
One like this one, mate. You can make all, you have all possibilities to make that something. So it's also, when I think of California for sporting people, it's a dream. Um, Cowboys, Indians, Buffaloes, Baywatch, particularly Pamela Anderson. What if she's a relation to John Anderson? We'll have to go and find out. I guess certain parts are very beautiful and some things are a little bit overdone, but others than that, the people are a lot of fun. Everything's got to be bigger and better than everywhere else, and uh, we'll have to wait and see if their gladiators and their challenges are bigger and better than everyone else. Well, fighting talk from Tower, and America's Patrick Marzia has some fighting to do. He trails South Africa's Prince Sonny by 10 points, which means Prince will have a five-second head start for a place in the international semis, the US of A versus South Africa. South Africa. You will go on my first whistle. We will say you will go on my second. Three, two. Prince Sonny one. from Johannesburg, a 22 year old actor and model. He's also one of South Africa's leading American footballers. Here comes Pat Chismaltia, a 26 year old snowboard instructor from Ketchum, Idaho. And Ketchum is what he's got to do. Prince to the rope, and Pat looks to be gaining. Prince to the handbike. His junior fans on their feet, and Pat coming through. Prince with an awkward technique, and it's cost him the lead. And Pat hits the rollers first. Next comes the net. Prince follows him. The Prince can see the crown slipping through his fingers. And Pat, tremendous, reaches the top first. The American has disposed of that five-second deficit and is going some across to the furthest ship. Down for a 25 mile an hour splashdown and turns his attention to the balance beam. Arms spread for balance. Prince lands. Pat sprinting. He's going for it. Big long strides up the travelator. He's there. Pat Chismazio of the United States swings into the semi finals. Pull back a five second deficit. One with ease. Here comes the Prince. Scoops to the top. Holds himself up. All just. He's going to savour the swing. His last piece of apparatus on international gladiators. Prince Sonny of South Africa, great contender. Well, Pat, how did you feel? It's just good to get through the finish line and be, uh, be in front of Prince. <laughs> well, That's certainly. Great. And I've just heard you did it in 56 seconds. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. I'm pleased with that. I'm pleased with that. You should be. Unfortunately, you're going to have to come back and do it all over again. But you're through to the semis. Here's a medal, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the semi-finals. Let's hear it for yeah. Pat of the US. Well Big man, I think everybody here in the National Indoor Arena agrees that you had one heck of a day. Problem about the Eliminator is one of the few events in sport that favor the good little man over the good big man. Yeah, actually, he's a very fast guy, but I got a problem on the net there. I couldn't climb it fast anyway. I just did my best. Prince, I'll tell you what, you accomplished the thing that you set out to do. At the top of our show, you told us that you were proud to represent South Africa and you were willing to die for your country. You gave every ounce of energy you had. You've got a lot to be proud about. Yeah, thank you. Again, I'm thanking all the people here for giving me the support and the spirit to carry on. I, I know you, you want to salute them. They're willing, ready to salute you here. Congratulations. Prince Sonny of South Africa. So, we wish the Prince a safe journey home and look forward to seeing Pat in the semis. So, two new contenders advance to our semi-finals and I think you'll both agree that they have the potential to be champions. They certainly do and if Pat's anything to go by, that was certainly a very fast eliminator. 56 seconds, something to keep our eyes on. And I think we can honestly say that all four of the contenders tonight were stars in their own right. They certainly were. Well, that ends our day here at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham, England. For Kimberly Joseph and Ulrika Johnson, I'm Mike Adamley. We'll see you again next week on International Gladiators. See you then. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Awuga, Arika Johnson helps lead the proceedings. New to challenge, Gladiators is next. Whilst over on pick, shifty side glances and some awkward silences in nothing to declare.
Russell. 